Thank y'all for tuning in to part two. Here we go. Dreadlocks have been a part of the history of every spiritual system, from Christianity to Hinduism. Lock hair has been a symbol of a highly spiritual person who is trying to come closer to God or God. If one is to research the spiritual history and meaning of locks, they will be mentioned in all holy books. The biblical Samson wore his hair in dreadlocks. And his unsurpassed strength was lost when Delilah cut off his seven locks of hair in cultures. Dreadlock roots are commonly traced back to Hinduism and the god Shiva, but stops there. Meanwhile, most people recognize that dreadlocks have their origin in Africa, but nobody seems to know where, how, or why. As with everything else, the true origins of dreadlocks can be found in Kemet, Africa. Originally, I'm sorry. Originally, dreadlocks were the mark of spiritual status. Dagon priests and Kemetic spiritual master Naba Lamusa Martin Big of the Earth Center explained in an interview. Y'all, I'm sorry. Those that are of African descent, you should know what I'm talking about. I'm just reading this off the website. Priests of diverse deities were required at least for a specific period of time to have dreadlocks. For example, priests of deities that are involved in the healing of the body and with procreation such as WSR, Hiru, Theros, and Sekhmet are required to have dreadlocks. There is a period of 7 to 13 years that a priest of these deities must let their hair grow freely and devote themselves completely to the deity. During this time, the priest has a role of responsibility toward the God and the temple. After that time, if they want to cut their hair, a ceremony is done and they can remove their locks if they choose. Interestingly, for other deities like Aishat, A-I-S-H-A-T, one must shave every hair on their body when serving that god or goddess. It depends on which god and temple is being served. What is about hair that is so important for priests and temples? It is a notation of purity. Hairs are huge emitters and receptors. When one is in an area, such as a temple, where the flow of energy must be tightly controlled, hair becomes either very helpful or very disturbing, depending on the energetic needs. Master Naba explained, even when a hair falls off of the body, it does not lose its quality. And it can become a big disturbance to the flow of energy. Even animals that are sacrificed are checked thoroughly for a specific type of fur. Y'all know in the Bible, the sacrifices had to be perfect. They had to be awesome. Nothing wrong with them. No blemishes. Those that are Christians, y'all know in the Bible, it had to be a perfect sacrifice. So I understand what they're saying there. It is not every ram or cow that can be used in a ceremony. It is only a priest who can safely determine whether an animal is fit for sacrifice and it is a heavy responsibility to do so. The untrained eye would think that any animal would do. But if there is one piece of the wrong kind of fur on an animal, it cannot be used. Just like in the Bible. See, this is deep. Just like in the Bible when the priest had to go before God for the people. They were like a sacrifice. If their lives wasn't perfect or if anything, anything was wrong, remember they used to attach the bell to them? If anything was wrong, they would fall dead in the presence of God. So this is really getting deep. I hope y'all stand with me. Um, tune in for part three.